Mr Andrew Gwynn. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. We've had a very wide-ranging wide debate, uh, 16 backbench contributions, and I want to pay tribute to my honourable friends, the member for Redcar, Luton North, Weaver Vale, Leicester West, Bladen, Warrington South, Keithley, Stretford and Urmston, Crewe and Nantwich, and Bedford for their very passionate, powerful, and well-informed contributions. I'd also like to thank the right honourable member for Ashford. Uh, and the Honourable Members for North Cornwall, South West Bedfordshire, Cheadle, Solihull and Redditch for their contributions, though we might not always see eye to eye. I think that there is a common consensus that we have to fix the problem in uh, adult social care, though how we go about that uh, is always going to be uh, up for some kind of debate. Now, I will give way. Very grateful to him for giving way. Um, <laughs> Is he aware of the very constructive cross-party and collegiate visit of the, select, uh, the Community's Local Government Select Committee to Germany, where we looked at the social insurance scheme over there, which could provide the perfect, sustainable and scalable solution to the adult social care conundrum? government needs to decide their position but of course uh, there are uh, examples across the world of how adult social care is funded what we've got to do is make sure we get a system that works for England uh, and I also Mr Speaker want to pay tribute to the workforce and carers because they don't need just platitudes from uh, any of us in this house uh, they need a government and politicians on their side. Uh, Mr Speaker, it's the second time that we've had to call an Opposition Day debate on this issue uh, after the lack of action uh, that the Government has shown towards social care. In our last debate in October, there was actually broad agreement, as there has been more or less today, across the House that reform of social care is a priority. But here we are, six months later, and little has changed. Now, last month, we heard the Secretary of State for Health and Social Care tell the British Association of Social Workers that he accepts his share of responsibility for the lack of progress since the Conservatives entered government in 2010. The Social Care Green Paper, now due this summer, has already faced substantial delays, and we need a commitment from the government that the paper will not be delayed any further. Because there is only so much longer that the sector can wait. Now, let's remember, in January, there was hope that the government would show extra focus to social care after the Department of Health was rebranded. But then, shortly after, in what sounded like a tribute act to the Prime Minister, uh, the Secretary of State for Housing, Communities and Local Government told a packed local government association conference, and I was there, that nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. Now, confusion still reigns, Mr Speaker, and it's true, nothing has changed. This confusion has meant that 1.2 million people are being denied the support they need. And let's look what the cuts mean. It has led to Northamptonshire, a Conservative council, where social care provision is, and I quote, on the verge of being unsafe according to the Director of Adult Social Care, that council effectively being the first in England to declare insolvency. Now, according to the Director, the additional funds in local government finance settlement will have little impact on the county's problems. And I fear he's right. But the Minister will be aware of the widespread fears that what has happened in Northamptonshire could happen again. Because Mark McLaughlin, appointed from DEFRA in December to oversee Northamptonshire's finances, has warned that all top-tier local authorities will soon face similar issues. And then we heard, only last week, how the Secretary of State for Housing, Communities and Local Government's own Conservative-run Worcestershire had buried a report urging... Uh, raising urgent concern after raising, rising costs, including on adult social care, that has forced the council to use over half of its reserves in the past five years. And SITFA 
expect the growth in demand to result in a budget deficit of £60.1 million, pounds, I won't give way, uh, by 2020-21. Um, well, I will give way because it is her council. <laughs> Very grateful. Extremely jealous to the Honourable Gentleman. He does talk about Worcestershire County Council, which of course covers part of my, well, the whole of my constituency of Redditch actually. And I'm aware of the concerns that he raises, so I just want to respond to that because I have of course been worried about that as many people naturally are. So I want to put it straight, I've had a meeting with the CEO and the leader of Worcestershire County Council to address this very issue. And I want to assure the Honourable Gentleman that they do have a sustainable plan to deal with this. Of course I will keep it under review and thank you for raising it. Uh, well, I'm very grateful to the Honourable uh, Lady because it's a nice segue because on Monday Paul Robinson, the Chief Executive at her council, Tory Worcestershire County Council, said, and I quote, there comes a point where cost cutting can't go any further. There has to be a solution. And he's right too. But so far we've yet to see a minister even acknowledge that this crisis in social care in local government is as serious as it is. And it is a crisis that has its roots in Downing Street. Because let's be clear, austerity and cuts to local government budgets have been a political choice of this government since 2010. And it gets worse, Mr Speaker, because behind every statistic I can quote, there are real people working in the service, real people receiving services, real people requiring services and families worried about how to support their loved ones. Funding cuts, poor pay, recruitment problems and a lack of support for the sector has hit the quality and the availability of adult social care support. In the past year, one in five local authorities have seen more of their care homes rated as inadequate or requiring improvement. In some areas, this has risen to as much as one in two care homes now rated as inadequate. But for some of the most vulnerable, even getting access to any form of support is difficult. Vulnerable older people with conditions such as dementia and motor neurone disease are being denied support due to a postcode lottery for treatment, according to which where you live can determine uh, that you are 25 times more likely to get social care support. South Reading paid care costs for 87 uh, patients per 50,000 people, while Salford funded 220.3 people per 50,000. In Stockport, you are almost seven times less likely to get the funding than those just a few miles away in Salford. Patients in Richmond are more than three times more likely to get the funding than those in Ealing. And ministers cannot hide behind the flexibilities on council tax in the terms of a social care levy because they know as we know that in the areas with the greatest need, a small increase in council tax will never ever make up the shortfall in funding caused by grant cuts from central government, which I remind the House have been slashed by 50% on average since 2010. This has in it has exacerbated inequality as poorer areas, often with many, many needs, have struggled to raise the funding that they so desperately need. And I'll use a local example uh, for the Minister. In my own uh, local authority, Tameside, one of two that cover my constituency, in the next three years there will be a £33 million funding gap in adult social care and yet 1% increase on the council tax raises just over £700,000. Never ever enough to plug that gap. And the news that Allied Healthcare, one of the biggest providers of home care, has fallen into financial difficulty shows the impact being felt in the sector. That 150 councils rely 
rely on our allied health care should send shivers down the spines of ministers. We got no real answers or assurances from the government that they are taking these developments seriously and that they are putting in place emergency contingency measures to ensure that we do not see a repeat of the Carillion collapse. Because, Mr Speaker, it is clear that in social care there are four reasons that people now give for their dissatisfaction. These are staff shortages, long waiting times, lack of funding and government reforms. This isn't just coming from us on this side of the house, but in the living rooms and the care homes across England, the same concerns are being raised as we have raised today. The government has a duty to respond, and I commend our motion to the house. Yeah.